The views and opinions expressed on this show belong solely to the hosts and their guests and do not reflect the views of any onside institutions unless explicitly stated. What's up, everybody? My name is Steve Vanderwall. And I'm Justin Klosser. And, and we're, we're your hosts, hosts of, of Cannabis, Cannabis Cum, Laude, Cum Laude, a podcast devoted entirely to cannabis. We're going to talk cultivation, business, medicine, politics, culture, advocacy, and everything in between. The cannabis industry is complicated. It's robust. It has a lot of moving parts, and it's our job to help you understand it just a little bit better. So tune in every week for a brand new episode. And if you have a question that you'd like answered on the show, send it on over to questions at CannabisCumLaude.com. Thanks. Enjoy the show. All righty, everybody. Welcome back to the part two of the Veterans Roundtable. I would like to thank Kurt Boschnack, Brian Buckley, and George Glessner for joining me again. Um, please, if you did not listen to part one, go back and listen to it. These are very decorated gentlemen and they deserve to be heard. You need to listen to really the whole thing talking about battle brothers in the first part. This time we're going to get into Hellman Valley growers company and, uh, a little bit of warfighter hemp and it's, it's going to be a blast. Um, so diving into HVGC, um, what, what sparked that? Because that is an, not, not only an awesome operation as far as veterans go, but even just having a cannabis business is not easy, and it's kind of, kind of a big deal. So, like, what, help me out. Help me out. What, uh, what started that? Yeah, you know, when we really started paying attention to how much this research is going to cost, and we didn't want to work with the NIDA program or the National Institute of Drug Abuse that's ran out of the University of Mississippi, we just kind of started looking like, hey, we're going to probably fund this on our own. And it really came from a Paul Newman salad dressing bottle where it said 100% of profits to charity. And we talked with our lawyers and our CPA. We're like, can we do this? And they're like, yeah, profits are profits. You know, like whatever you guys left over, have at it. You know, those are your profits. So we really wanted to keep a military niche to it. And when you serve in 1st Marine Raider Battalion or any Raider Battalion and you go into the Helmand province in Afghanistan, you become part of the Helmand Valley Gun Club and you get an HVGC tattoo on you. So we wanted to keep the military niche and we threw HVGC up on the wall and we came up with Helmand Valley Growers Company. So we went, we briefed all the guys who were part of the HVGC crew and just explained to them what our objective was and just to make sure everyone was good with it because we knew we we're going to have to trademark it and do all the things that a professional business needs to do. And not only were the guys great with it, they're like, can we get a job with you when we get out? And we're like, that's, that's easy day. So we launched and we made our first sale on February 2nd of 2020, right before a global pandemic. So not a bad uh, choice of timing, right? But, you know, luckily here in California, we were deemed essential. So we're able to keep operating. And when we gave our mandate out to stores that we're trying to get into, yeah, you know, there's a little bit of hesitancy. They're like, okay, that sounds great. Good to do research. Good luck with that. But once we got the institutional review board, it really opened up a lot of doors for us where people were like, all right, you guys are the real deal. You're doing the real thing. And now we just kind of continue to expand our SKUs where we start out with this lit vape. We're now having live resin uh, vape out. We got pre-rolls and we're just about ready to open up a micro business. Uh, that will be a 5,000 square foot cultivation indoor grow along with the storefront. And we're just going to kind of keep expanding there. And what's been really rewarding for us is how the cannabis community has really kind of embraced us. Uh, what I've found here, and I tell people a lot, obviously we're all natural competitors and you think, okay, I'm this company and they're that company and I have to defeat them. But what I've seen here in the cannabis community is that if you're, 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 you're keeping your moral compass point of true North, people will rally around you. It's the people who are doing like the nefarious activities and trying to get rich quick and whatever it may be, they get kind of shunned away from the pack and people call them out. So it's just been really rewarding of not only how we're able to help with veterans, help find jobs with veterans, but really just how the whole entire community has kind of rallied around us and made this into something really special. A hundred percent. I always uh, say that um, you're never going to make it in the cannabis industry if you're a business person trying to get into cannabis. You're going to make it in the cannabis industry if you're a cannabis person who happens to make money. <laughs> like that, you know what I mean? Like it's, if you're in it for the green, not, you know what I'm saying? The money. Absolutely. Like <laughs> if you're in it for the money and not the other green, then 
you're probably not going to make it because it's a tough business to to deal with, right? There's a lot more headaches than just running. You got to be passionate about it, you know? You have to have the passion. If it's not there, then nothing works. That's why you, you know, spin your wheels after you get out of the military sometimes because you're trying to find your way. You get pushed out of another nest. Yeah, exactly. One's from your parents, one's from the military, and then you try to, you know, piece it all together. But, yeah, once you have the passion, you know, you can just take it and run with it, especially in cannabis, or it could be anything. You could be a doctor. You could be uh, in law enforcement, what have you. So yeah. As long as you got a fire underneath you, you're going yeah. to take it 100%. And with oh, yeah. that military training and structure, it's easy to transform into success if you can keep yourself on the tracks, right? Absolutely. But, um, crap, I had another thought that you said there. It just completely left me. Oh, well. Just rewind um, it in your mind and yeah, then right? come right back to reality. <laughs> um. Nope, she's gone. Oh, yeah, there it is. All right. So uh, Andy Myers, uh, you were talking about him, and I'd really love if um, if you could link me up to talk to him at some point. I don't know if he's an available oh, guy or sure. not, but yeah, he no, sounds he loves it. exactly like he took the exact same path as me. Like he was potentially drinking a lot. I don't know. It sounded like he, you said he traded the alcohol. We for all that, were. So. I mean, to be honest with you, the whole entire unit was. So <laughs> not to single and, that guy out. And then, well, yeah. Well, and then it's really, it's a lot of the military, right? That's It's kind of military culture. Like, hey, let's get out. Let's go get a beer, right? Or yeah. let's go grab drinks, whatever. It doesn't necessarily have to be a beer. But, yep. um, but I also like was pulled out of the whole alcoholism and drug abuse because of cultivation and, and like finding yeah. cannabis. And that's just like, that has inspired me to go back to school, which caused this podcast in the long run. And like, I, it has just been a beautiful thing. So it sounds like he's, he's of the same boat. Um, and so it, HVGC was, was founded by, if I was reading the website correctly and correct me, please, if I'm wrong, by you, Andy, and another gentleman by the name of Matt Karan, Karan. That, that's correct. Okay. And so, um, so Andy is the grower. You are kind of from, from what I'm drawing, like kind of the orchestrator of the whole, whole thing. And what, uh, what does Matt the muscle. do? Yeah, the muscle. Yeah. I'm a, I'm more like the why guy and they're like the how they like put it together. You know, I just, throw, okay. I, I throw shit at the wall and we kind of put it together somehow, you know, but, um, no, Matt, you know, it all kind of worked out well. Matt made master gunnery sergeant in 20 years, which not too many people can say that, especially, in marine special operations unit where i think there's like four to six of them total in the entire uh, special operations uh on the marine side so that's pretty remarkable what he did and you know he's just a very talented operations guy where he can organize put things together everything you would expect in an operations chief he can do it and then some and what was great with andy is you know andy and i founded a security company as well and we use that as more of our access and placement to kind of understand what cannabis was and legal uh, cannabis uh, organizations. And really, Andy went around and did a uh, site plan for a group that was, uh, you know, I think it was like a 5,000 square foot outdoor grow. And Andy just developed a security plan for him. And they're like, well, how much do we owe you? And he goes, just teach me what you do. And they're like, are you you're serious? He goes, no, I just want to come here and just kind of learn how to grow. And that, that was his payment. Uh, and that's really what kind of got him going. Uh, and he, you know, stand by if you ask him questions about cannabis plants, because he will go down a rabbit hole. Like, I mean, the guy is insanely passionate about it, which is great. Yeah. Uh, he just had a great R&D uh, product come out. It looks amazing, but he's like beating himself up on it because he's like, I can do better. It's like, dude, it's your first run with new lights. You know, It's like, it is what it is. But that's just how he is, which is going to, you know, just shows you the... Uh, the passion the and the upside potential that, that is, he's having there. And he loves teaching veterans and he loves teaching them what he knows. I mean, he's probably been doing it now uh, close to six years and has gone to college for horticulture and all that stuff. So, yeah, I would just recommend having him and him alone on a podcast with you and your uh, ho- co-host because he'll, he'll run. I mean, he'll just we'll go. Talk forever. So really no, I think this, this it shouldn't be a podcast. We should go there and do the podcast yeah. in person. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what – that that actually makes me think. So, what? Uh, how how big is your facility? If you don't mind me asking, by all means, dodge the question if you want. Yeah, no. The facility we're in right now, we work with a great company called uh, Platinum Products. Uh, they really kind of got their kickoff being Platinum Vape. They're a multi-state operator, uh, family-owned. George and Cody Sadler. They wanted to help out Battle Brothers, and I pitched to them what we wanted to do in Helmand Valley. 
and they brought us in. They're like, Hey, we're going to help you guys get that brand going. Um, you know, and they basically don't worry about money, just pay us back and make us whole when you start selling. So we were probably one of one brands in the country that could literally put product on the shelf for zero dollars. Right. And they've just been great mentors and helping us out. Wow. And that's who we partnered up with, with the lake. It's up in Lake Elsinore, right outside Los Angeles. That will be our uh, cultivation site up there. And that's going to be a 5,000 square foot grow indoor, uh, as well as a storefront that we'll have. And here we have a manufacturing license. So we've been doing a lot of manufacturing and some cultivation as well. Uh, so we're just really excited. And, you know, we, we kind of had the big pie in the sky. We wanted to go vertically integrate and do all this stuff at once. Uh, but we had a really sound businessman sit us down and kind of explain to us how powerful our brand is. And he's like, you know, flowers, flower, oils, oil. He's like, let's be honest. He's like, everyone's kind of using the same thing. And there's not too many people in the state that are going to be able to tell the difference between that cultivar and this cultivar. But he's like, the brand you guys have developed, he's like, I know you weren't running around Helmand Province thinking, oh, man, we're going to make a kick-ass brand and uh, and everything out of this. But he's like, you kind of did. And he's like, and you got an amazing mission behind it. And it's true. And he's like, you know, you got companies that will pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to PR firms to develop a brand for them. So he's like, really kind of stick with that and then kind of start growing into a vertically integrated model. And we've done so in a pretty quick amount of time. Like I said, we've been operational. First sale was February 2nd, 2020. You know, we have the license, we have the facility, we're just waiting for the city planner to give us approval to put a sledgehammer into a wall so we can do some refurbication. But then we'll be, you know, essentially vertically integrated within two years, which is, you know, a pretty good run, uh, considering we went at a very deliberate case. And we're self-funded. We haven't taken an investment or anything of that nature. So we kind of are still the masters of our own domain. It's a dream, really. The dream in any business. Like, I, that's so... You build it and they will come. Untypical, especially in the cannabis space, right? Because yeah. like it it's amazing. so expensive to get licenses or anything. You you almost need a whale investor. Like that was meant to be. Everything you could just tell. Everything just lined fell up. Fell right into place. Oh yeah, it's meant to be. Um, but yeah, good. like a like color point. Keep your moral compass point true north. You're gonna have good people rally around you. I mean, there was a lot of exits we could have took on the off ramp that would have just probably led to some bad news and to some short wins and probably legal issues. Uh, but we just stay tried and true. And we understood the end state of getting medical cannabis into the VA system. And we just started back planning from there. And, you know, now we're kind of in phase two of the overall plan. Um, okay, so I want to redirect there instead of where I was going to try and go to the uh, research that you're funding through HVGC and Battle Brothers is focused at looking at if cannabis can help with PTS, which we touched on um, in part one of this episode. Is there headway on that? Is there, uh, do you, like, do we have results back? Is it, it, did I drop the ball and miss a published paper or is it, is it going to be like a white paper somewhere? Yeah, once we get through our first study, we, we will publish uh, in uh, academic files and medical files, things of that nature. And that's you know really why you need an IRB. Without that, you really don't have the street cred. Uh, what we do feel very confident with is Niamedic has done it. They've done it over in Israel. They've shown how it helps reduce the symptoms of post-traumatic stress. And they're getting even a little bit more progressive where their active duty forces, I believe they're actually providing them microdose of medical cannabis if they suffer an IED strike or a blast wave because some of the studies that they're finding is it actually reduces brain swelling and helps speed up the uh, recovery process. So we're feeling very confident that this will work out. We kind of have to, you know, crawl, walk, run. Uh, getting a private institutional review board was a little bit of a challenge. Uh, they were asking for DEA licensing and all that stuff, which we didn't need. Uh, we wanted to get a little bit more aggressive and do a pilot study, but they kind of told us to back off and do an observational at first to kind of prove that we know what we're doing. And then I think from there, we'll get it. We'll get the green light with a formulation that we'll be able to put together as well as a, a recommended treatment protocol. And that will be our second study. And like I said, then after that, we should have it pretty much dialed in and we'll take it over to Michigan and do the final study. And then at that point, we're kind of rounds complete and we need approval to start doing FDA trials. And, uh, you know, but I think at that point where the data is going to be so overwhelming with American doctors verifying it, obviously with American veterans, we're feeling very confident we're going to get this thing done. So with this observational study, is it like you have vets that have been diagnosed with PTSD that 
use cannabis and vets that have been diagnosed with PTSD that don't use cannabis and like you have to, I don't know. I'm well, just, can you, yeah, lay out what, the... what we'll do is um, there is an inclusion and exclusion uh, criteria that we, we do have on our website. Uh, the big thing is this won't be a 60 veteran study. They will have to go through a phone screening to see where there are. There are certain, you know, things we won't be able to touch. And, you know, for example, if there is a history of psychosis in their family, they won't be eligible for it. Uh, the Israelis have seen it actually ex exacerbate that or people with multiple mm -hmm. personalities. It can have oh, a negative no. impact. Uh, but then from there, they'll come in, they'll get a non-invasive uh, physical. So really just kind of checking blood pressure, temperature, really doing a deep dive on your medical records. And then they'll be provided DSM-5 CAPS table test, which essentially grades out your severity of post-traumatic stress from like a zero to a 10. And then from there, it's a 90-day process. They'll go out, they'll purchase some sort of product from a legal dispensary, and it's really journal intensive where they'll write down what they took, how much they took, what they felt, so on and so forth. And they'll get a phone call from the doctors at Niamedic and UC Irvine once a week to check in on them. And then the nice thing is, since it's a prospective uh, IRB, we can monetize them at the end. So they make it through the full 90 days. They come in for the final physical. We go through to a, a final DSM-5 test, and then we can monetize them with some sort of gift uh, for, for taking the time to do the study. Uh, and then from there, we'll progress more uh, aggressively because, like I said, the, the end state from this first study is to develop a recommended treatment protocol as well as have a formulation ready to go. And we're thinking that will probably be most likely delivered uh, either via tincture or pill, just depending on how things go. Awesome. I, I, I love the layout. I'm excited and I am hopeful that it's going to be able to go into um, more structured trials as opposed to uh, observation, even though it does sound like you have a pretty, pretty nice skeleton laid out as far as an observational study goes for making sure all your T's are crossed and your I's are dotted. Um, hey, real quick. Yeah. Real quick. Um, if you already said it, I apologize, but you know, once everything is, you know, the study is complete, when will that be published and, and where do you think will that yeah, we'll publish be available? It, uh, Pretty quickly once it's, it's finalized and most likely what everyone does is a, a website called, uh, I think it's PubMed. Uh, mm -hmm. Those things will Got get it. published in there. So you can actually go cool. and Google Niamedic PubMed and you'll see some of their studies pop up that they've conducted over in Israel. We'll have to have you come back on after you publish that. And if not beforehand, that, that could potentially be a pretty lengthy process, I would assume. Yeah, you might not um, be yeah. able to to be able to get him on the show anymore after that, you know? No, 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 no. I'm a little scenes. guy, man. You keep me on your show, I come back. So that's all good. Awesome. Um, cool. So getting back over into the business side of things with uh, HVGC, um, from what I could draw when I was looking at the website, I noticed it's it's mostly carts. I think you did mention also pre-rolls as well. Um, and I saw the cultivars purple train wreck, Afghanimal, sour diesel, purple kush, headband, and sour lemon haze. Now, was there any specific reason for picking these or they were um, maybe just what was available? I, I don't know. Yeah, so one thing is we should by the end of the week launch our new website. So we'll have all the new stuff and everything that we're doing. Okay. So I'll be updated. Uh, yeah, we, we did. We started off with distillate uh, babes. We actually started out with three in the beginning. And we did uh, an Afghanimal, we did sour diesel, and then we did purple train wreck. And why we picked those was just feedback that we were receiving from veterans of what terpene profiles and cannabinoids that were helping them best. And we essentially caught lightning in a bottle with Afghanimal. We really thought from a um, marketing standpoint, you know, HVGC, Hellman Valley Growers Company, Afghanimal, having that Afghan kind of twist to it. We thought that sounded just really like that's pretty cool. And when we developed the Afghanimal, which is uh, Afghan Kush and Animal Cookies uh, combined, the results were incredible. Uh, even when we gave it to the Israelis, they were freaking out saying this is doing exactly what the medicine should be doing. They're like, it gets you euphoric. You're very relaxed. And, you know, one of the doctors is like, usually I smoke a joint before I go to bed just so I can sleep. He's like, I wanted more of the Afghanimal. And he's like, I have not had that good night of a sleep since I can remember. Even when I had to get up and use the restroom, he's like, I just came right back to my bed and went right back to sleep. 
So that's been really kind of, like I said, a lightning in the bottle, and it's been working out great for the veterans. And that's how we kind of keep expanding our additional cultivars, just feedback that we're getting from veterans. We're not going to say anything's data-backed. We're just going to say, hey, word of mouth was working for veterans that we're talking to. These are it. And that's why we're really excited about our live resin line that's coming out. It's 100% live resin. We don't cut it with this lit. It's just the whole uh, – full terpene profile of that plant fresh frozen you get the whole entourage effect and it's not so much of a head high you really get from it it's more of the body high so it is going to be lower in thc but we've been giving out to nfl players who are retired as long as veterans and they're like it, it actually feels like i can be more functional during the daytime i'm not worried about getting couch locked or anything like that well, we talk about on the show a lot of the full spectrum really and in all aspects but this is specifically where we're talking about cannabinoids, which is where it tends to land. Um, the I truthfully feel like the distillates and isolates and, and those things, um, they're, they're just missing something, right? Because they don't have the full suite of cannabinoids that are intricately working together to kind of harmoniously play your systems, right? And like... Not, not that you can't buy, but get beneficial uh, results or get the head buzz that some people are looking for. By all means, you can achieve that. I just, I think that the uh, live resin that that would definitely appeal to me more personally. Um, so we are unfortunately flying through time here, and I do not want to uh, miss out on uh, Warfighter Hemp as well. So before we close out Hellman Valley Growers Company, is there anything else that that we should touch on? No, I think we really nailed it. And like I tell people, you know, follow us on Instagram and again, check out our website. Uh, we're extremely active on all that. And, uh, you know, we're, we're getting ready for some uh, pretty big things here. So uh, it's going to be just stay tuned. We're only getting started. We'll, we'll definitely have to bring you back on as those things come up. I was telling um, Kurt before we came on here because fortunately we had a little bit of time to meet up before we came in here today and uh i think i'm going to start like making sure that i schedule at a minimum a quarterly like veterans episode right where we make sure we're highlighting some kind of veteran um i would like to do it more frequently but let's be honest in the cannabis space there is so many companies sometimes it's hard to make sure you're picking right but i'm going to Definitely make sure there's at least a quarterly. That's 1 million percent doable. Try to do it more frequently. Um, so I would love for you to come back on as these new new ventures pop up and we can kind of put that out to at least the audience that I have. Um, you got it. Love it. So, Kurt, Warfighter Hemp. We were talking about this uh, down the road a little bit before we came in here. Yeah. Um, what... How did you get your start? I know uh, you you briefly touched on it in part one, but like the story behind it is actually pretty cool to me. So could you kind of lay that out for the listeners? Absolutely. Yeah. So the more I'm getting into this, the more I realize there are a lot of veterans that are trying to break into the hemp and cannabis space, which is how I got in contact with Brian. So definitely go check out his Instagram because that's where you see all the great strains and what they're doing behind the scenes, you know, as well as Warfighter Hemp, got to give myself a plug as well as you. Um, so anyway, I sort of hit a, hit a wall with jobs, you know, and I just was like, I, I just don't care as much as I feel like I should. And so I felt like a lot of it was just, there was something wrong with me, but really it was just finding that passion we were talking about earlier. So I just started researching. Um, I think my mic is making a noise. Sorry, I'm fidgety, so I'm going to mess everything up. (laughs) Yeah, so. Comes with territory. Where was Uh, I in the story? Your mic was making a noise. No, I'm just kidding. Um, (laughs) Don't leave me hanging there. You uh, were getting bored with uh, the jobs that you were finding and then uh, started doing a Google search. Yeah, got it. Yeah, so I was going through the motions with various jobs and trying to find meeting what I was going to do. And I always had it in me to, um, you know, want to farm. You know, whether that's like a ranch or actually, you know, farming crops of some sort. And I've always been a cannabis advocate and and uh, hemp, you know, advocate, at least behind the scenes. Right. You know, Um, and so I just started researching veteran internship programs, um, you know, 
it, it could have been local. It could have been online. It could have been anywhere. And Warfighter was one of those companies. I ended up emailing them about an internship. They didn't have one. I just was like, I'm just going to start meeting people and networking because I don't know how else to get in to the industry, you know, right? Just scratching for a hole to, to break through for sure. Yeah. I was just sort of finding my way. And, um, that email led to, do you live in Denver? I was like, no, I don't. I actually live in Rochester, New York. I don't know if you ever heard of it. Kodak, unfortunately, RIP, but, yeah, right. um, hopefully the, the cannabis industry will, will, you know, point the city in the right direction where it should have been with Kodak. But anyway, I digress. <laughs> so, um, Warfighter contacted me and said, Hey, we, oh, did something just happen? Oh, someone dropped off. Yeah. yeah. My bad. Um, I'm going to pick up on every little thing that moves. You're good. ADHD. Um, yeah. So anyway, uh, Luker from Warfighter Hemp, Steve Daniluk, the, the owner, founder, uh, as well as his partner out in Denver, um, had a talk with me and basically just said, we like your background. We like that you're a Marine. Um, you were, at, you know, in the Marine security guard embassy duty, and we'll give you a shot. So they end up flying me out to Denver and S Steve or Luker, uh, is still a full-time pilot in, in, um, or for, uh, American airlines right. and, and was, a like I was telling you earlier, um, he was a Marine pilot and retired and transferred over to American. And so anyway, flew me out to Denver and I got to learn a lot about the business, which was amazing. And that internship happened out of nowhere, just for me being passionate and me wanting to, to dive into the space and see about this industry that I only heard of because it was on the West coast or something like that. And then at the end of that internship that came out of nowhere, um, they offered me a job. So I was like, you know, things seem too good to be true. Well, not in this case. So it like really helped me launch into a company that I was passionate about because of their mission to combat the opiate addiction leading back into part one and, and earlier parts of our discussion um, and helping veterans as well as um, giving back to vets uh, to combat uh, veteran suicide and what have you. So that's a little snippet. And if I need to clarify anything, let me know. No, that's, <laughs> that was absolutely beautiful. Um, we, uh, if we didn't make it clear, Warfighter Hemp, obviously, as is implied by the name, is a CBD company. They have lotions, um, gummies, uh, pet CBD. I'm trying to go off of my memory. Yeah, now. we have pet treats for, yep. yeah, pet treats um, for dogs. And then there's a tincture that's for both, tincture. you know, cats Capsules. and dogs. Yes, there's capsules for the, adults the only, works. though. You name it. If there's, if it's a CBD product, they, they pretty much are, are holding it. Other than edibles, obviously, we don't, yeah. you can't have edibles. And well, the gummies, I guess those are kind of, anyway. Um, they are. <laughs> yeah. So um, they use organic extracts from what I could gather from the website, which is yes. is pretty cool. It, we're not running um, crazy chemicals through everything, which you is. Know, and third thing. party tested, which is huge on both the cannabis and. So, yep. you know, CBD side is COA is provided for products, which was beautiful. A uh, certificate of analysis, um, yes. which gets very detailed as you read and you're like, all right, it sounds like it's good. Yeah. I'm pretty <laughs> sure they tested this once or twice. Yeah. Um, there's also a program within warfighter hemp called the shield. Can you talk about that a little bit for me? Yeah. So the shield, excuse me, let's take a quick, quick drink. So the shield was just launched about a month ago. And so what we do is give back 50% or give veterans, active duty military, first responders, caregivers, um, and military spouses this 50% off because our mission is sort of like a hybrid of what Brian, you know, was, was it goes um, between both. Yeah. Yeah. Be between two different organizations, it's sort of lumped into one in, in a way. Um, so we give 50% off to vets and those other statuses through the shield and you verify your status, get approved, you have your 50%. And then the other piece of that is 10% of all proceeds go to veterans organizations like the independence core foundation, um, as, as well as the Spartan sword, um, various, um, uh, programs for, um, canines and, and linking up them with veterans. So oh, that's cool. Yeah, there, there's a lot and you can check it out on our site. You just go to warfighterhemp.com, 
giving back. And then you'll see a list of all the organizations that we've given back to, as well as how much we raised, which was uh, roughly 140 K um, for these veterans over a period of time since 2016. So still you know, a pretty significant amount of money, man. That's yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. Uh, canines too right like that's that's a really awesome thing uh, uh very similarly to cannabis right they say that having something to care for like whether it be a cannabis plant or a child or um an in a pet right is could be what stops somebody from pulling the trigger right having that purpose that other thing that they have to make sure they're still there for to be able to provide for because if losing your life results in that thing having a negative effect or lower quality of life, that is a reason to stick around, right? Which is, it's, it's an interesting tool, but it works, right? Like, it's, it's amazing that self-preservation isn't enough in a lot of these cases. But I don't know. I think that's awesome. Um, yeah, and if you, if you start really focusing on yourself, you know, and, and your mental health and and why you're feeling what you're feeling, that kind of thing, just being more in tune. And then that passion comes with it. I think that's when everything really starts to flow. At least that's how it went for me. Definitely. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to throw that in there too. You also touched on the opioid epidemic and um, we obviously touched on it with part one with Battle Brothers as well. Um, I kind of have an, uh, an adjacent topic that I'm interested in bouncing off of you guys, which would kind of be more leaning towards like the SSRIs, anti-anxieties, depression medications that are being put out um, and alternatives for that. Uh, I know that this is a topic that also kind of interests uh, George as well. And um, I'm just curious where you guys stand on uh, psilocybin as a potential therapy or treatment to uh, kind of combat instead of using like Zoloft or something for lack of a better word. And will it be at the VA soon? Let us know. Um, no, I'm just joking. Yeah, that, that's the, so Oregon just became the first state in the country um, oh, wow. to legalize actually every drug in a certain uh, volume, but the psilocybin uh, therapy is also legalized now and so it's not a recreation use but they're wanting to use it for what we just talked about anxiety ptsd treatments but the only way to use it legally in oregon is i guess in a therapeutic setting but that's some a big thing that um like the new uh department i got hired in they're really wanting to try to figure out how we can get this, since it's legal in our state, how we can get this with our veterans now. That's awesome. So it's it's still, sorry, I got to fly. <laughs> um, it's got still it. a that. big progress, but I know that's on the big agenda right now. What it do you think, like Brian? There's a lot of upside and potential with it. I mean, I know a couple of guys I served with who um, <clears throat> really have some uh, pretty bad post-traumatic stress and they went through a couple treatments. I mean, one guy I know in particular was doing it monthly. Then it went down to biannual to an annual thing and it's made a huge impact. And when you start hearing like schools like John Hopkins and people like that really diving into that research, there could be some progress there. Again, I think it's all micro dosing. Uh, my only thing I've, I've never done it myself, but I just tell people to make sure you're in a safe environment, making sure you're working with a shaman that they know what they're doing and most definitely bring someone who was not going to participate in the ceremony to watch after you. Uh, I just got to call it out. There has been some sexual harassment and things like that where people have just been kind of out of their mind or in a different spot and they've been taken advantage of. And that's pretty disgusting. But those are my yeah, disclaimers. No. But again, I think uh, the country is, is very open to, obviously, cannabis, and I think the country is getting more accepting to, well, what's with this stuff on the psychedelic side as well? Because we've seen some of the horrors with the opiates, even with you know typical yeah. United States government knee-jerk reaction when we said, oh, hey, we've been giving veterans too many opiates, and they cut them right off. One of the doctors who's part of our study, and she worked at the VA, she lost one of her veterans to 
suicide because he didn't know where to go or what to do because they cut him right off of opiates. They didn't wean him off. Uh, so I do think there's some, uh, again, oh some gosh. very much upside potential with some big names uh, looking into it. Um, d Definitely. I didn't know. I'm just curious because uh, – a lot of times there's, it could go both ways when you're talking to a vet, right? They could be hyper, hyper, um, like law enforcement minded, I guess is the best way to put it. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Uh, vigilant maybe, yeah, um, hyper vigilant and like feeling like maybe this is, this is crazy. We shouldn't even be dabbling in this realm. You know, so I was just curious, uh, the perspective, um, we at least got to research it, you know, to yeah. at least understand. And that's where Brian, um, with Battle Brothers Foundation comes in, it's it's amazing because if you don't have the IRB, you don't have the data, you can't display and speak to that data, you're not going anywhere. It's just, you know, we're just having a conversation. But when that data backs it up and you're able to present it, it's perfect. So I think uh, at some point psilocybin, you know, it, I guess, quote unquote, that industry will show up at a later date. I think, I think it's, I think it's inevitable. I think it's the next frontier. Yeah. Um, and I've, there is actually a, I'm, I may have talked about him on the show before. There's a law enforcement group called leap law enforcement against prohibition, which yeah. is very much like what happened in Oregon for the legalization of all drugs and trying to provide maybe like a, a I don't know if they're specifically aiming at a safe space, but more so like a hands off approach, right? Like you're, I'm sounding ignorant now because I'm trying to speak to things that I don't really know fully. So I'm going to stop before I put my foot in my mouth any further. Anyway, um, <laughs> gentlemen, uh, look up Leap. If that's something that you're interested in, just look them up and you'll be able to find the information easily, I'm sure. Um, we are getting definitely at the end of time here. Uh, but before we sign off, I want to give you guys the opportunity to any any last plugs, anything coming up in the future. I know that Warfighter has some apparel coming out also. Uh, was it HVGC or Battle Brothers that I saw the apparel on? I think it was HVGC, right? There's some apparel over there too. They got yep. sweet shirts, sweet, well, shirt, not shirts yet. Hats coming, shirts coming soon. Yeah. We got shirts, tank tops, hoodies, a long sleeve. They even got one of those baseball shirts that's like the three quarter sleeve. That's pretty sweet. Um, check those out if you're in the market for some new clothes that will also get you entered into the giveaway we're doing. Anyway, I'm running my mouth quick. Last remarks. Any, anything else that we want to put out that we're missing and also maybe where you would like people to find you if they want to reach out to talk more. Yeah, I'll again, yeah, you nailed quick. it with, uh, we got a website, new launch coming out. We got a new uh, clothing line coming out on top of that. So we're getting a lot of great feedback from people, what they like. And we got some, you know, really cool, uh, jerseys. I think they call them like jerks slash, uh, shirts slash jerseys, you know, for Padres and Dodgers that will have a Helmet Valley twist to them. So stand by for that stuff. And if you happen to be in Missouri this weekend, I will be at the Grow Trade Fest. I'm the keynote speaker uh, Friday morning. So if you're out there in the land of or Lake of Ozarks, I think it's called Missouri, come on out and check us out. Is there oh, going to yeah. be a virtual version of that? I'm not sure, but I'll find out. I'll let you know. Awesome. Thank you. Ozark, yep. great show. I'll be there. <laughs> I gave them an unofficial plug too. Yeah, so for us, we have a few uh, product giveaways um, coming down the pipeline. Uh, one with Notch Gear. You can check them out, notchgear.com. Uh, They're pretty sweet, those hats. Yeah, yeah and it's, um, it's the shooting hats. And I'll, I'll leave some suspense there. You can go check them out. But stay tuned to our, um, our Instagram for more info on that. Awesome. Um, Warfighter Hemp. And then a pet product giveaway with Leashes of Valor and go check them out too. So we have these awesome product giveaways coming out for a good cause and stay tuned on our Instagram. Hell yeah. Appreciate it. George, any last remarks? No, just can't wait until the uh, research that Brian's company is doing finally goes through so that we can actually start helping from the inside of the VA as well. Cause our hands are just so tied legally. <laughs> I, and, and Bureaucracy real quick, I, at its finest. I do want to take yes. a moment to <laughs> kind of point out that a lot of people, a lot of people give the VA a lot of slack, right? But really, the work that they're doing is good. They oh, just yeah. don't have enough funding in hands to do it for everybody, and that's a really unfortunate thing. Maybe your VA care may be substandard, and if that's the case, and you can afford to go to private healthcare, 
I would argue you should so that you could allow these people who can't afford to do so to be able to have a better experience while they're at the VA. However, use your VA benefits. You've earned them. You know what I mean? Like I'm by all means not trying to say don't do that. But if if you're doing okay, maybe let somebody else get a better experience. That's my only thought anyway. But stop giving the VA flack. Right. Like stop giving the VA flack. They're doing what they can with the hands that they got and the money that they got. And if you really have an issue with the care that they're providing, throw them a donation. Yeah, the, the tide is turning. So eventually, I think CBD and um, if it's not all, already being researched, I know the NFL's doing it, but that's that's all I got to say about that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, thank you so much, everybody, for listening to both part one and part two. Like I said, if you missed part one, you need to go back and check it out. It was awesome. Um, Brian, thank you for joining me today. Thank you. <clears throat> wow. You gonna so make sorry. it? Kurt, yeah, thank you for joining me today. George, thank you for joining me today. You guys yeah, have been you. wonderful. This conversation has been beautiful. Listeners, don't forget to go check the social media and find that post. Easy enough to get entered. Buy a product. Are your products available anywhere outside of California, or is that a California-only thing? Only California right now. Okay, well, any Cali listeners, hopefully we got a couple of them. I don't know yet, but we'll see. Any Cali listeners, by all means, grab your products from there, shoot the email. We will ship the piece your way if that's what you want. Um, So with that, we are coming to a close. Thank you, everybody. And don't forget to elevate your state of mind. Thanks to our friends here at Rockbox Recording and Production in Rochester, New York. They are a full professional podcast and video studio designed by a radio guy for podcasters. Audio, video, voiceovers, editing, whatever. Mouth off at Rockbox at rockbox.com. You can follow Cannabis Cum Laude on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Cannabis. Type Cannabis Cum Laude into your search bar and you should be able to find us, but the links will also be posted in the episode notes as well. If you want to help support the show, head on over to Patreon, and that will ensure that we're able to keep the best quality sound and video coming to you on a regular basis. And if you liked what you heard today, please don't forget to rate and review the show.